So how else can we see changes? Well, we can see changes that haven't been committed yet by using commands like uh, diff and diff tool. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is come back to our first user's repository, and I'm going to make a change. Um, so let's say we called it test music store. Another command line, I can type the git, uh, the git diff command, which shows us all of the changes that have been made in uh, various files. And you can see it shows us a, a sort of typical diff format where we have plus to show us that a particular line has been added and minus to show a particular line has been uh, removed. Uh, by default, when you install Git on Windows, it won't actually have the colouring enabled, but there are various tweaks you can make to your Git configuration file in order to show that. I can actually bring that up. At the, at the top here, we see we've got this section of our Git config called Colour, uh, which just tells it to use the automatic colours. If you don't like looking at diffs on the command line, you can use a graphical diffing tool. So if you uh, run the git diff tool command, it will start up whatever graphical diffing tool that you've got configured uh, on your system. Uh, in this case, I've got a tool called diff merge installed, and it brings up a nice graphical way of showing that if you don't want to look at it on the command line. And it will plug into um, whatever diffing tool you have, if you like using tortoise merge or um, uh, win merge or any tool like that. You can have it plug into um, any of them. Okay, so we've got this change that we just made to uh, this file, and let's say we didn't actually want to make that change. How do we get rid of it? Uh, actually, let, let's commit that change first. So we've committed a change, which was renaming the store from my wonderful music store to test music store. And actually, we didn't mean to do that change. What if uh, we want to undo it? Well, there are a couple of ways of undoing changes uh, in Git. The simplest way is to use the command called revert. So what I can do is I can say, well, I didn't want this commit. I want to undo it. So I can copy the hash, or the first few characters of the hash that identifies that commit, and go back to the command line, and I can say git revert. And then the ID of the commit that I want to undo and it says finished one revert and it brings up the commit editor saying okay this is the commit it's about to revert and I can just say close that yep that's fine so if we come back to Visual Studio now we'll see that it's now gone back to my wonderful music store and if we bring up the repository visualizer we can see there's now this extra commit in our repository which um, undid that test change and put it back to how it was. So that's what a revert does. Revert undoes a particular commit by creating a new commit that reverses the changes. And if you're used to subversion, it's revert. It happens in a very similar way. It creates a new commit that undoes those changes. Um, but there's another way with git to undo changes, which is a bit more dangerous, and it's called uh, reset. And git reset allows you to basically wipe out a commit and pretend that it never happened in the first place. So Let's go back to this commit here, the rename the store again, where we renamed it accidentally to test music store. And let's say we want to pretend that that commit never took place. So what we can do is we can go back to the commit before that, copy that, and we can say git reset, and I'm going to tell it that this is going to be a hard reset, so lose all the changes, and then the ID of the commit. and if we bring up the repository history now, we can see that those two later commits where we renamed it to test music store and then we undid that change, uh, they've now completely disappeared. So we can completely wipe out commits at Git and pretend they never happened. Um, and that's one of the nice things about Git, and it's also one of the dangerous things about Git, is it allows you to rewrite the history of your repository. So pretend things that happened actually didn't happen. And the reason why that can be a bit dangerous is, of course, because if you've pushed those changes up to the remote server uh, and someone else has pulled those changes down and you reset them so they never took place on your machine well it's only on your machine because you've only modified your repository if we had pushed those changes up and someone else now has them well the next time we do a git pull from the remote server those changes are going to come back down again so the sort of general rule of thumb with commands that rewrite history is that you don't rewrite history for any commits that have already been pushed up, but you can do for commits that you've only made locally that haven't been pushed up yet.